<laughs> Wouldn't hate that, just for the slow against the uh, the primal beast. You may now select and there's that heroes. void spirit we were talking about. Very good call. Let's see it's also... where they end up going. Okay, we'll be Cuckoo playing the Venom. So, so the lane matchup versus the Faces of Void is pretty solid for the Venomancer. Like, you do have damage over time, which the Faces of Void is going to struggle with. But as a game, as a, as a game answer, it's a little bit different, though. Like, Faces of Void has the capability, especially with this Aghanim Shard, to jump in on the Venom. If it doesn't look like a good fight, you can jump out. They've got a lot of damage in the Chrono. Ice Blast as well. And, and like, Venom is a hero that kind of wants to itemize a little bit more for... Like the, the versatility, uh, I should say, the, the utility is what I was looking for. Just use some auras maybe to help buff himself up. And I don't think you can do that game, this game, with the, the Ancient Apparition. So it's nice for the lane, but the game I'm a bit concerned about. I think you could probably still look to go into something like a pipe on the Venomancer. Honestly, even just the, uh, the Wraith Pact would be pretty decent on Cuckoo. This He's highly skilled enough that he's not going to get caught out by Tornado EMP combos probably not going to let a, a lone druid bear get close enough to him so it's all on on the marcy right now so i think that's where talon are going to be looking to focus a lot of their attention is just some aether remnants scratch that he's actually getting a few right clicks in the face nice dodge makoto with the dissimulate he's got the right click range all the new heroes can hit from afar and you see that is exactly the case here is makoto finds a solo kill and he'll get a tip as well from Hyde. Beautifully done. Top lane, white mon. A bit, a bit of trouble here, KP. Trampling all over the Dazzle. This is something you were mentioning that white mon's going to have some issues with his positioning in this lane. The cell's going to be cancelled off instantly. KP needs one more right click. And again, one of the new heroes being able to right click from afar. Mm, I wonder if they actually... Sounds weird, but did he want to die? I don't really feel like it. He's got considering about taping the Dazzle down, but he's not going to look to join them. So it's just going to be the two members on T1 at the moment. Savage, time dilation once again, and he just gets the time walk away. But now Q, he's going to enter the party. He'll have the Ancient Apparition as a little bit of an unfair advantage. It was a two on two. It was nice and even, but now with the position four coming down, tell him they'll get that plus one required to kill off the Marcy. Very early timings. Same sort of thing with Amasi. Are they going to dive Thompson? And Makoto, he commits with the double ultimate. Makoto's now stuck under the T1 tower. A remnant will provide a little bit of distance away. A couple more right clicks. And now with a poison touch, but Savage! What a rotation! The Chrono clipping three. They've got Q nearby as well. Talon, they're on the ball in the second game. Even KP says, screw it. I'll come join the mid-team fight as well as Talon. Six and zero start. You're getting something in exchange for this. And, oh, that's a free tower take with just one person are they gonna look to respond with everyone for this they actually end up canceling the tp who is that on Invoker. is that on top so thompson's yeah. not gonna be here and now they can just chase down zephyr another kill for talon t1 tower claim mid uh oh this is not how the lanes were supposed though. to go Anna's playing very aggressively just wanting to push this lane as quickly as he can into the tower but now he's just this is the game on Anna. previously it felt like thompson was doing all of the heavy lifting but He's having a decent start here. Gonna look to try and run down the AA and probably will. No use in. I didn't even have the TP, but wouldn't have been able to accomplish anything with it either. But if you could take away his two tier one towers, then things don't feel so dire for them. They're gonna be able to come back into this game. If he doesn't backpack his urn like maybe a couple times and they make the mistake, then then he'll be told to sell it. KP? Bit of trouble. Try and onslaught away, but that will be stopped instantly from T1. A much needed kill to get them on the board. All right, Thompson got the urn charges. He's, he still doesn't know maybe about the situation. The extra farm. Honestly, even Zephyr as well. They're prioritizing him to get a decent amount of net worth too. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Response coming through. Not wanting to he give might up be able to beat the bear. Free. Yeah, Makoto's in a bit of trouble here if they can keep the roots going. Zephyr's gonna look to jump in. But a great jump out from Makoto, and they do end up getting the bear kill. Now to the top side of the map we go is Cuckoo. 
Gets the poison over off. It's going to clip onto both the heroes here, but Savage feels like he has an opening to drop the Chronosphere. But Coda's going to be nearby with a double damage rune. He'll use the Remnant onto Cuckoo, then they'll be able to turn to deal with the Dazzle. Beautifully done from Talon, as they bring four members to be able to take the skirmish top. Immediately looking to try and go into the mid push, but you've really got people around him. this time. Yeah. He's got Zephyr nearby. We'll be able to lock off the double damage room. Makoto, he Stay goes in. in. And now he's out of ultimate charges, so Anna, he can freely charge him down. They'll give the alacrity over to the bear, but once again, the eighth, the Renden. Buying enough valuable time for Makoto just to get out of danger. Hey, he resummoned this bear. This is important. In Blast, they even give the movement Makoto's speed as committing. well. Oh. The, uh... I'm not calling it a triangle. The area, the, uh, the uh, Radiant Ancient area, because th that would have allowed them to just scout this out much more easily. So just little plays like that, preventing you know, the engagement inside the area. Early smoke coming through, just allowing Ana to finish off the Roche for themselves, maybe trying to catch them off guard. Mm -hmm. Catch Ooh. Makoto. The chain control has to be ever so perfect, and he's lost mana now, Makoto. Actually, still got enough to be able to get the actual step away. No Whoa. way. Tops it in What? Oh, my Lord. Red like a book. <laughs> and and they know where Savage is as, as well. well. Oh, my Lord. Beautifully done from T1. You get Roche. You get a crazy kill onto the void for it thanks to Thompson's Invoker. This is why you pick him this hero. Timing here off the back of the ages, they need to continue to play aggressively across the map. You want to fight here though on Talon? You got a great wall to the high ground. KP's just going to look to try and target down with the Venomance. Yeah, nice. With the Ice Blast following up forward as well. Cuckoo's going to charge into the middle to at least get the poison over off before they secure the kill. And T1, they can turn it around though if they get a couple lucky roots out and they will do just that onto the Primal Beast. But towards the northern side, Topson, he's being caught out. He's in trouble at the moment, but Savage! He doesn't even get the Chrono off. Pump faked it for the first time. The Cold Stat was able to disrupt the second use and they kill off the Faceless Void. But can they catch up to Makoto though? Into the tree line, a perfect timing with the dissimulate. And he will have an ultimate charge up. <laughs> top lane, Thompson. Looks like they're going to be able to get the jump onto the Evoker. Zephyr's nearby to maybe get some bonus movement speed out. But the Ice Blast will connect with the global potential. Thanks to Q, they're going to be able to bring down Thompson's Invoker. And it looks like Hyde will successfully TP out as well. And about the Enchantress, he's going to look to pair up with 23 Savage. Easy kill onto Zephyr. A little bit more gold into the bank of that kind of pseudo position three that we have from Hyde. Let me tell him that extra 80% Chaos Meteor damage is a lot mid lane. Ice Pass onto Ana. Makoto's going to be able to jump as well. Ana, he wasn't ready for it. An unsuspecting move from Talon and they just blow up the lone druid. And that is as soon as Roshan spawns. Be able to go right on in. They want to take away some of this vision, but Cuckoo is going to himself fairly well. They're going to jump in. Off Hyde. Into the river. Look at the alacrity damage coming up from Zephyr for the Chronosphere. Eclipse off to Thompson. But he's able to get the protection off. They don't have the damage at the moment thanks to the BKB. Let's see if Thompson's going to be able to continue to run himself away. The respect coming up from Talon. They will not enter the high ground. Instead, they're going to deal with the heroes that are still caught outside in the low. river. Zephyr is able to jump on forward, but Cuckoo, he doesn't have this capability. They should be able to chase him down. The onslaught into the middle, but oh, a perfect what a tornado. tornado. As Thompson breaks the combination. As T1, they've successfully avoided that attempt. Beautiful move from them. They dealt this split away. Tops and back to the higher gun. Cuckoo in the middle, just soaking up abilities. Bear that shall not be named. They again can poke the bear. But then they need to protect him. They're going to do just that. The jump onto KP. KP's gone. He couldn't be KP. Yeah, no opportunities. Now Hyde, he's also getting chased down by the bear. Chan's going to be able to slow it down for the moment. But the tier three's already been melted. Zephyr is into the middle. The Enchantress posturing aggressively. Makoto's going to look to buy some time, but Savage to the Good back. Chrono. Right against the Chrono. On to three. It's on the saving support as well. There's going to be no grave to keep them alive. A Savage, he can now turn to try and deal with Cuckoo. A four star up into the tree line, but it's not enough. A Savage now, he'll turn his attention towards the Lone Druid off the back of the respawn. Oh, it's got nothing to keep him healthy. It's Talon. What an incredible high ground defense. They say, screw your Aegis advantage. We can fight into it even down KP. Fairly well pushed in. They might need to deal with top lane a little bit on T1, especially oh, since they got that last Oh, three. Oh, my lord. Okay, Makoto. 
Not gonna flop. Has already used a couple of his abilities. Cuckoo's on the prowl though. T1 are gonna connect as well. Makoto is in a lot of trouble. They're gonna be able to capitalize. As Talon get a little bit too antsy, they feel like there was an opening for them to take a fight with nothing too crazy. The Wraith packed on Cuckoo as well. So that is a significant factor if he's able to drop that and the pipe as these initiations are coming in on Savage. But... They're gonna try and hide. Maybe with the damage coming through for the meatball as well, the secure the kill, but Savage, he gets a corner Didn't to get both dazzled. the cores. Oh, the the silence blocked as well. It'll click onto Arna, but they haven't been able to blow anyone up throughout the ultimate, so maybe they're going to be cautious here on Talon if they want to stick around. KP, a lot of damage out of the pulverize. going to try and chase him down, but down to the south side. Topsham, he'll secure the kill onto the support, but they're still going to be cautious here. Topsham will be able to reposition thanks to the bonus movement speed. The deafening blast will push back the face's void as well. Savage, he doesn't want to let them go for free. Another time walk on forward. I don't think he's going to be able to catch up. Are they considering this, Topsum? What shenanigans are you up to here? How can you pull out of the hat to try and kill off the faces void? And well, he won't even stick around to make the attempt. I'm going to try and buy some time for them to get towards these next set of items. But again, Talon, they're also getting stronger and stronger. They are indeed. Just keeping these lanes shoved out as much as Topsum. Topsum. <laughs> Optimistic play coming through there, and well, now he won't have the BKB considering Roshan's up and filling things out as much as he can. Oh, he can get a pick off on Look him. at the instant TPs. Uh oh. T1, you've got to get out. Zeph is like, all right, my job is just to get the T3 tower, but Savage, his job is trying to catch up to the bear. We'll find the slow. He's going to get the bash as well. Looks like the Savage roll will get some distance away. Instant smoke out of town, though. We've got a four on four across the map. They do see T1 in the river. One disc picked up by Makoto as well. So he can afford to be even more of a, a man too. He's able to recall it and instantly join it onto the team fight. That'd be big. They're playing around this uh, double siege creep wave as well, but Talon aren't wanting to wait until it has enough time to have a true impact. <laughs> onto the high ground is KP. Cuckoo. Fine. Tactical. Oh, he's going to walk on forward. A four star breaks the combo. Savage going to try and catch up to Whitemon as well. Gonna be able to get some distance away, but Cuckoo's the one that's in it. Some trouble here is Cuckoo. He'll go down. Meanwhile, the Cronus fit to the north, though. Savage. He found two heroes, but he didn't catch out Thompson. The Invoker starting to get the combinations going. He's meanwhile in the middle of the fight, though. Oh, Arna these bashes. He the bash onto 23. Savage, and now T1. They need to get more. They committed heavily off the back of these buybacks. They should be able to catch up to Q. Duking down to the south, but the buyback coming out for the face is void. T1 need to respect. The capability of Savage rejoining them. It's KP. He's got the BKB again, and the Chrono again. He used the Refresher previously. Objective, man. They got very lucky there with some of those bashes coming through, but it's all on the back of Zephyr going for this Abyssal Blade. Once he pops hey, that unleash, Savage. you're almost guaranteeing Hang on, Savage. He's got another round of the BKB. Topson might look to try and bring down the Primal Beast. Savage has the Chrono again. He popped the Refresher, but Whitemon's on the outskirts. He should be able to play around with the Grave, but the Ice Blast, it's going to prevent Topson from being able to survive. So he's going to look to deal as much damage possible before they secure the kill. Meanwhile, still inside the middle of the lane, though, Cuckoo, he's the one that's in trouble. A four star, but it doesn't get enough distance away. He's in the middle of it all. Maybe with Arna nearby to try and help out the bear. Once again, locking onto his target. But it is simulate will get them out, KP. He what? wants to go in though. He cancels the pulverize, so somehow Cuckoo's still alive. And this is enabling Arna to have a free fight. We're seeing what the bear can do once he's able to get onto his target. Topson, he's gonna oh, jump in though. Topson, he knows no way to stop. Around the Roche pit, and this would be really valuable to be giving over to Topson. Spending that buyback just to be able to get back into this and be able to quickly close in enough. KP has the BKB to be able to play around with. Is he going to be quick enough though? They'll the hear the charge coming through. They're going to get the Ice Blast to charge in as well. KP to disrupt. He's KP got gets it. the Ages as well. He snagged up the Ages at Immortal. Now Makoto's going to jump into the middle. They need to keep Thompson alive. He got everything. KP gets some distance. The Invoker should be able to step up to the high ground thanks to the Ghost Block and he's okay. Can they set themselves up for round two though on T1? The bear, priority number one. They'll drag it back with the remnant. The damage is stacking up for high, but it's not enough to get the summon. And in fact, Arna's going to look to TP out the bear, but the use of the pulverize, it'll keep it locked into the middle of the team fight. Down goes Arna's bear. They'll get rid of Zephyr as well.
No bear for 95 seconds. They know this as well. They're just going to be able to move on forward. Not anywhere close to being able to pick up a... Savage even getting the nice little arcane rune. He's going to be harassing even more with the time dilation or even just the push aspect. What a big fight. They got everything from that Roche as well. Refresher picked up by, uh, by KP, I believe. They gave the cheese over to Savage. Aegis, of course, we saw have a big impact in that team fight. And they've even got the Scythe of Vice as well. Hobson has to go absolutely crazy if they're going to be able to hold the base here. And that is difficult now because you're going into a Lotus Orb onto KP. So he can protect himself if he wants to charge in. Thompson, that's an aggressive blink. He's forced to pop a BKB as well. Thompson's in trouble. Ice blasts into the middle of the green. not going to do Silence anything. Silence again. To the northern side. They get on top of the Dazzle. Thompson's down without a buyback. And Talon, I think they've done it. On to Cuckoo next. No space as Talon. They'll take over T1 territory. Your base is now mine. Oh, yes, it is. Not even bothering to go for the rack. Straight tier four, says Savage. It might be... Yeah, he time walks back. Just the PTSD coming from previous qualifiers all the way back at TI9. He got all the way to game five to be able to go to TI. He doesn't want to give it up again in a similar sort of fashion. Going for the safer play, but with no buybacks being expended, they're just going to want to go on forward. It's going to be all up to Zephyr and Ana to be able to defend this, bringing it to a game three, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. A jump in, what a, a Hail Mary attempt. Bye bye, Zephyr. He's got a buyback. But Savage another chrono. Is another out of the chrono. And this time, it's on to the real hero. On to Arna at the front of the fountain. Now they'll go for Zephyr as well. And why not fountain dive against some players who are well known for it? Talon. What an incredible series. They are yet to drop a map. And the TI qualifiers, they will book their ticket in the grand finals. Big smiles coming all around and very well worth it, right? And the thing that most impressed me is that they played it in the Talon style. These weren't 30-minute victories. These were games that they played on their terms, able to drag it out. Game one, 56.